we are going up into the treehouse to talk about growing things today and a special type of art called a still life. I'm Miss Mo from the Wichita Children's Theater and Dance Center. I am so excited to have another session with you here in the treehouse. Today we're going to talk about growing fruits and vegetables and about a special type of art called a still life. So let's get started. A still life is a painting or a picture that an artist makes by arranging things. Still life usually has fruits and vegetables, maybe some vases or other dishes. I'm showing you a few of the still lifes that I have around my house and here in the tree house. You can make a still life of your own. Here I've arranged on my table in the tree house some fruits and vegetables. These are all pretend fruits and vegetables, but you can use real fruits and vegetables if your mom or dad say that's okay. And the good thing about a still life is you can arrange them any way you want to make the picture look the way you like. Maybe we don't want these bananas here. Let's pick them up, move them over here, maybe add some tomatoes beside them. We can arrange it just how we like. Artists like to make still lifes because they can put different colors next to each other. They can practice painting different shapes and make a composition or make a painting look the way that they like. There was a famous artist named Cezanne. And Cezanne really liked to paint still lifes. The reason he did is because he did not have the patience for a model. And when he would have a person sit for him and model for a painting, if that person had to itch their nose or if that person had to wiggle or stretch, Cezanne would say, why can't you sit still like an apple? Cezanne thought painting fruits and vegetables was much easier because they did not wiggle or move around when he was painting them. When you're drawing a still life, you can look at some of the basic shapes and draw them grapes are round, right? So you're going to just draw some little circles. If you look at this artichoke, it almost has some triangle shaped leaves. A banana has a slope to it, kind of a curved line. So you can break them down into some basic shapes and then fill them in for different colors. In this still life, we see that there is a kettle and a bottle. In this still life, we have some cantaloupe and pears and a jug. And do you see how the fruit is arranged even on a fabric? Artists would like to use fabric so they could practice painting different textures as well as shapes and colors. You know, this is the time of year where we all start to think about growing things in the garden. Tomatoes are something we all like to grow. Bear and Bunny Grow Tomatoes by Bruce Kosselniak. This is a story about how much it takes to grow a garden and how not to be lazy. One winter, Bear decided to grow tomatoes. Bonnie did too. In the 
this spring, Bear began by digging a place for his tomato garden. Bunny didn't want to waste time preparing anything. He poured his packet of seeds on the hard, weedy ground. Bear took care to rake all the clumps and stones and weeds out of his soil. Bunny put up a sign and went for a folding chair. Bear worked hard pulling out all the weeds and hauling away all the stones from his garden. Bunny made lemonade in his blender and found a favorite book. Then he got a big pillow and went out to watch his garden grow. Bear made small seed holes and dropped a few seeds into each one. Bunny dropped some lemon seeds. Soon, little green sprouts were popping up in Bear's garden. Bunny couldn't be sure what was growing in his garden. Doesn't look like tomatoes. Bear put in tomato sticks to help his tomatoes grow tall and straight. Bunny put in a swimming pool and invited Bear to his pool party. Maybe some other time, said Bear. I'm busy right now. A gentle summer rain fell as Bear went out to weed his garden. Now the tomato plants were almost to the tops of the sticks. In Bunny's garden, the weeds had grown almost to the top of his window. At night, Bear slept lightly so he would be able to hear anyone who might wander uninvited into his garden. Bunny slept like a ball of yarn. In August, Bear's plants were bursting with large, juicy tomatoes. I know my tomatoes are here somewhere, muttered Bunny. Bear ran out of boxes and baskets to put his tomatoes in. Now, what do will I do with all these tomatoes, he wondered. Bear took two boxes and made his way to Bunny's yard. I know you've been growing tomatoes too, said Bear, but I'd like to give you these. Maybe you can use a few extra. Thank you, said Bunny. I do have a tomato garden, but I just can't find it. But when I do, the tomatoes are sure to be colossal. Bear had a very good harvest of tomatoes, and so did Bunny, thanks to his friend. Are you planting a garden? Have you bought some seeds where you can plant outside? This is a great time while we're all at home to plant things, so then we will have fresh fruits and vegetables to grow. Here's a strawberry plant in my yard that's coming up. Can you see the leaves? We're going to read a really funny book that's going to talk about uh, lots of fruits and vegetables. But first we're going to meet some fun animals before. To market, to market, to buy a fat pig. Home again, home again, jiggity jig. My, that is a fat pig. What does a pig say? To market, to market, to buy a red hen. Home again. Uh-oh. That pig left the pen. It looks like the pig has been getting into some trouble. It's hiding there behind the fridge. To market, to market, 
to buy a plump goose. Home again. Uh-oh. The hens on the loose. It looks like the house is getting destroyed and the pig is on top of the fridge. I wonder how that pig got up there. The hen is running away. To market, to market, to buy a live trout. A trout is a fish, so she has to carry it home in a bucket of water. Uh-oh. Home again. Uh-oh. The goose was let out. So let's see what we can find. The chicken is under here in the counter. The pig has been eating a salad and has a bowl on its head. And the goose is escaping off the page. And our lady is on top of the fridge trying to catch the goose. To market, to market, to buy a spring lamb. <laughs> Home again. Uh-oh, away the trout swam. Here goes our trout. He's leaving the page. What else is happening? Now the pig is eating some chips. The duck is in the sink. The goose is in the sink. The chicken is in the freezer. And the house is a mess. To market, to market for one milking cow. Moo! Home again. Uh-oh. Where is that lamb now? So here's our trout flapping around out of the sink. The chicken is in the drawer. The pig has a towel around its neck. The goose has a colander on its head. The cow is eating some oatmeal, and the lamb is in the dishwasher. Oh dear, this is just getting crazier and crazier. To market, to market, to buy a white duck. Quack, 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 quack. Now the cow's disappeared and I'm out of luck. So we have a goose in the fridge, a trout and a pig in the sink, a chicken in the dishwasher. The lamb is under the sink. And where is that cow? Can you find the cow? Let's go very slowly and see if you see the cow. Oh, does that look like something that belongs to the cow? There's the cow's tail. I think the cow is in the other room on the couch. To market, to market for one stubborn goat. Bah! The duck flew the coop and the goat ate my coat. So it's getting crazier. We have the lamb in here in the living room. Looks like with the cow. Here's the chicken. The goose is having some spaghetti. The duck's feet are up here pig is in the fridge looking for more food to eat and the poor lamb has peanut butter on its head and the fish is in the dishwasher. This is the last straw! I'm a shopping disgrace! Everything's running all over the place! It is a mess in here! The pigs in the kitchen, the lambs on the bed, the cows on the couch. There's a duck on my head. The hens in the cupboard. The goose is there too. The goat's in the closet. It's chewing my shoe. The trout's in the bathtub. This place is a zoo. I'm hungry, I'm cranky, now what will I do? To market, to market, to buy some potatoes, celery, beets, and some ripe red tomatoes. Here's where we get into our fruits and vegetables. Some pea pods and peppers and garlic and spice, a round head of cabbage, a sack of brown rice, 
add okra and onions and one carrot bunch. Home again, home again. Hot soup for lunch. All those yummy vegetables are going in to the soup. And then it's nap time. So there were lots of great vegetables in that book that we can eat, that we can plant, that we can buy at the store. Fruits and vegetables are very yummy, but they're also very, very healthy. They will make us strong and they will help us to not get sick. I'm going to play a quick game. We're just going to tell the difference between fruits and vegetables. So we have in here in our little tin a card and we're going to look. First we have carrots. Are carrots fruits or vegetables? That's right. They're vegetables. Yum, yum, yum. Carrots grow under the ground. What about bananas? Are bananas fruits or vegetables? Fruits! What about peppers? There's all kinds of different peppers. Some peppers are really spicy. Some peppers are sweet. And there's peppers of all different colors. Peppers are vegetables, right? What about apples? Apples grow on trees. Are apples fruits or vegetables? They are fruits. We'll put them in the fruits. <gasps> Peaches. Peaches also grow on trees. Peaches have a pit in the middle of them, and that pit is the seed, and you can grow a peach tree from a peach pit. Are peaches fruits, or are they vegetables? <gasps> they are fruits. We'll put them in the fruit box. What is next? Green beans. Green beans are something you can grow in your garden. And I remember as a child having to bend down and pick all the green beans off of the plant because they grow really low and you have to get low down and snap the beans. Are green beans vegetables or fruits? They are vegetables, right? Okay, grapes. I have some fake grapes right here in the tree house for my still life. Are grapes fruits or vegetables? Yum, yum, fruits. Sometimes fruits are sweet, right? And vegetables aren't always sweet, but still very delicious. Here's another yummy vegetable. No, Miss Mo. Here's another yummy fruit. You can grow these fruits in your garden. They are strawberries. Put them in the fruit box. Oh, here's something else you can grow in your garden. This is way bigger than a strawberry, right? This is a watermelon. Watermelon is one of my most favorite fruits. One of my most favorite foods. So we're going to put it right in here in the fruit box. Let's see what we have left. Only a couple more. Oh, tomatoes. We've talked about tomatoes in this video, haven't we? You can grow tomatoes for sure in your garden. Are tomatoes fruits and vegetables? Sometimes this is a question that's hard to answer. Some people do call tomatoes fruit, but we usually consider a tomato a vegetable. Corn is something you can grow. Corn is grown on tall stalks, and these are called ears of corn. We have ears on our sides of our head to hear, and these are ears of corn. It's also called corn on the cob. And you like to eat corn on the cob? You munch it off of the cob? Corn is a vegetable. And our last one, something else you can grow in the garden is lettuce. Is lettuce a fruit or a vegetable? It is a vegetable. Lettuce is what you find in salad a lot of times, most of the time. And you can put lettuce on sandwiches. You can just eat it plain, and it's very easy to grow. All right, that was a fun game, figuring out what were fruits and what were vegetables. Look around the foods in your house and see if you can find out what's a fruit and what's a vegetable. 
I have another book for us today. I know that's three books in this video, but there's a lot of books about fruits and vegetables. And this book is important because it talks to us about who grows fruits and vegetables. I know we talked about us being able to make our own gardens, and we certainly can. But there are other people that grow a lot of fruits and vegetables, take them to a market every week. It's called a farmer's market. Now, the other book we read about a market was more about a person going to a grocery store market. We can call a grocery store market, but this one's about a farmer's market. This is called Market Day by Carol Foskett Cordson. I really like this book. Harvest Sun Up Over Bay Over Farmhouse Start of Day. Family Farm Cow Still Asleep Farmhouse Family Dreaming Deep Farm cow waking tardy moo. Can you give me a big moo? Benson's rising, much to do. Bread and butter, apple jam, hats on, shoes on, screen door slam. Passing farmyard, passing cow, lugging, cannot stop to feed her now. Lugging ladder out of shed. Picking apples green and red. Apple boxes in a stack. Filling farm truck front to back. Finally finished loud hooray. Benson set for market day. Zipping, zooming, running late. No one closing farmyard gate. No one looking back behind. Market day on all four mines. Tents and tables driving slow. One spot open. End of row, busy Benson's all four out, not aware of stairs and shouts, not aware of market trouble, coming closer on the double. Mr. Spencer catches pies, Mrs. Spencer wipes her eyes, Matthew's yellow onion sale, out of buckets, out of pail, sacks of jewels, potatoes spill. Nathan's pumpkins roll downhill. Busy Benson, apples out, not aware of stairs and shouts, not aware of market trouble, coming closer on the double. Gracie glances, sees a flutter. Pea pods fly and Gracie mutters. Tumbling cans of fishing bait, Clayton glances up too late. Braided ropes of garlic flip, crates of Kyle's tomatoes slip, dolls Irene made, teddy bears tumble out of tree trunk chairs. Ryan and Marie meow, hide behind a rusty plow. Farmer Gilbert's table wiggles, baby Edith jiggles, giggles, ears of sweet corn twist and drop, upside down on tassel top, busy Benson's looking out, well aware of stares and shouts, well aware of market trouble, coming closer on the double, hungry farm cow, hungry know just what to do. One green apple, one more red. Benson farm cow finally fed. Benson's help with market mess, market open, big success. Benson family home asleep. Benson farm cow Dreaming deep. Harvest moon up over bay, over farmhouse, end of day. I really like that book because it shows you all the different people that are making and growing things to sell at market. So the Bensons had apples. 
I hope you had a good time today learning about gardening and fruits and vegetables. We read a couple really fun stories and talked about a type of art called a still life. I hope you make a still life at home. Arrange some fruits and vegetables or whatever you can find and make an awesome painting. I'd love to see a picture of it. There's also a principle below where you can color lots of fruits and vegetables and cut them out and put them into either a soup bowl or glue them onto the page into a garden. Enjoy the beautiful weather while it's nice outside, and I hope we see each other soon at the Wichita Children's Theater and Dance Center. Goodbye for now.